<laughs> so good in the cottage. Hey, good idea. We can uh, take it as our fee for helping you out, Eric. Hey, you still owe me a thousand quid, don't forget. Right, this is between you and Marlon. Didn't mean to say you can't give it to me. I am not giving it to anyone. Go on, get in there. Hey, what are you doing with Steve's stuff? Ah, uh, it's all mine now, Betty. I'm impounding it against the money that he owes me. Nicking it, don't you? Mean I'll go mad when it gets back. Wrong end of the stick, Betty, as usual. Steve's not getting back because neither he nor Kim have been away. And they went on the honeymoon. I don't think they could afford it because they've been hiding in the cottage since the wedding. Avoiding his creditors, I imagine. <laughs> What's up? Well, that's, that's what I want to know. I was working on that van. You know, I'm making it easier for you and taking it down the old garage. Oh. Yeah, you'll have more room there. Well, maybe, but it's just one problem. It doesn't belong to me. I've told you, it's been empty for years. It doesn't belong to anyone. That doesn't matter. It still feels like stealing. You can't steal something that nobody wants. It's like a public service. Recycling. You don't make it easy for anyone to help you, do you? It really would be a great place to work, Lise. Ah, just come with me. Try it for one day and see if we're not right. OK, just for one day, we'll see how it goes. Oh, it's all it's left of Jan's stuff. All what she wanted, I sent by post. These are going to the tip. Oh, no need to. Not really right next door to the county's best recycling service. I'll take them. Do you know, Mandy, you lot are out but scavengers. My marriage goes down the pan, and all you're bothered about is what you can get out of it. Oh, Ned, don't be like that. This is my way of, well, relieving you of all them painful memories. until we reopen. But you can't do that. Well, I've got no choice, Betty. I've got to be getting to work. What about my pension? Well, I can't help. I'm not allowed to work behind the post office counter. I've done the papers and the bread, and that's my lot. That's not good enough. Where's Viv and Beck? Oh, well, who knows? They said they'd be back by now. Went off for a romantic night away. My Betty's they'd probably end up killing each other. Do you know, I don't know what's happening in this village lately. First there was a skullduggery at Steve's, then there was more grief at Glover's, and now the Windsors have gone AWOL. Morning, love. Thanks for looking after everything, love. We had a wonderful time. Must have gone to separate hotels then. No, we were very much together. You've got customers waiting. You two look decidedly perky. Smile and the world smiles with you, Betty. You should try it sometime. I will, when I've got my pension. The village gossips will be loving this. I expect Eric Pollard's been spreading the good news. Yeah, he thinks he got away with it. But I'll get even with him somehow. Oh, we will one day. But right at the moment, we've got more important things to worry about. Like getting out of here for a start. What? I can't keep James cooped up all the time. It's not healthy. Considering the amount of money I owe, it's not going to be healthy for me out there. I could get lynched. You can't lose your nerve now, Steve. Look, we'll do what we can to repay everyone, but, well, they're just going to have to be patient. <laughs> I can honestly think they'll fall for that. Well, they don't have a lot of choice. They can sue. Can't get blood out of a stone. How can you be so calm? <sighs> well, panicking isn't going to get us anywhere, is it? Right now, I need to get back to Home Farm, start working on a recovery plan. I'm sorry, Kim, I'm just not ready to face anyone yet. Well, you're just going to have to hurry up and pull yourself together. You got us into this mess, and now we've got to get out of it. And I don't intend carrying any passengers. I want cut flowers in all the rooms, Nicholas. Yes, ma'am. And that magnolia's looking a bit sorry for itself. Do something with it. I'll do my best, ma'am. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? Well, I just wondered if you realised I'm here. Of course. Oh, the uniform's a good fit. You might think about pressing it sometime. OK. 
So, what do I call you? Your ladyship? Oh, no. No, we're quite informal here. Mom will be sufficient. Thanks. So, what do you want me to do? Wait till you need it. Do you need me to go over your duties? Well, yeah. Mom. I expect you to be here every day, smart and punctual. If you need to go into the house, you will use the servant's entrance at the back, not the front door. Yes, ma'am. You have no need to tell me that you're here, because that's the natural assumption, since it's your job. Yes, ma'am. On arrival, it is your responsibility to check that the car is ready for use, both mechanically and aesthetically. Now, I won't be going out for at least an hour, which should give you time to clean and polish it. Yes, ma'am. There'll be a lot of waiting around. In future, I suggest you bring a good book. Now, if you have any other problems, check with a member of staff. Don't bother me again. Just wish everyone would stop lying to me. We didn't lie to you, Emma. You're pretty sparing with the truth, then. You knew my parents weren't going to let me go back to school here, but no one told me until I spoke to Rachel. OK, maybe we didn't handle things right. But a girl your age ought to be with her parents. I don't care what you've agreed with them. I'm not going back to Germany. You'll be going back to Germany next week. There really isn't any other choice. That's what you think. Meaning? Meaning I thought I could trust you two. Seems I was wrong. I'm just going to have to sort this out my own way. And what have you got planned? That's my business. I can keep secrets too. God, I hope she doesn't do anything stupid. Well, it isn't our fault, Sarah. It's up to Tony and Becky to talk sense into her. They're her parents. Yeah, but she's our responsibility while she's here. I really couldn't face them if anything went wrong. No, I'll go after her. Could probably do with the practice. Could be Victoria in a few years. Steve picked the wrong man when he tried to swindle me. Are you sure you got this right, Eric? Look, the man is flat broke. He's on his uppers. That's why I impounded goods. No chance of any cash. I've got all my savings invested with him. Well, my advice is to get round there straight away, old boy, and salvage what you can before the vultures pick him clean. Well, I'm sure it can't be quite as bad as you say. Yeah, well, I'll go now, Al. Just in case Eric's right, I'll hold the fault. You seem to be settling in really well at the surgery, Kelly. How are things at home now? We decided to play at being happy families. The trouble is, I'm too old to believe in those sort of games. Don't you think you're a bit hard on your mother sometimes? She's not my mother, and she never will be. Yeah, well, that's not her fault, Kelly. I'm sure she's done her best to bring you up as her own. I was only three years old, but I can still remember my dad telling me to say hello to new mummy Kelly. I didn't want a new mummy then, and I sure as hell don't need one now. Look, Kelly... Look, if you've got any complaints about my work, I'll listen. But my private life's my own, OK? Aren't you going to answer that? Look, I told you, I'm not ready to face anyone yet. Oh, well, whoever it is knows we're here. There's no point in hiding anymore. I need more time to think about what I'm going to say. You've had more than a week. I'd say that's long enough. I really can't deal with this now, Kim. You have to. It's time to face the music, for both of us. Look, I'm sorry things haven't worked out the way you'd have wanted. There really isn't anything else we can do. I'm not asking you to do anything. I told you I'll sort it myself. Well, whatever you're planning, it isn't going to change your parents' minds. They're determined you're going backward. They can't. It's just they can't find me. Well, grow up, Emma. Wherever you run to, you're going to have to find somewhere to live. Money to pay for food. There are plenty of ways to earn a living in London. Well, not for someone your age. More grown up than you think, Jack. I've already had a baby, remember? Emma, you're just going to get yourself into more trouble than you've ever dreamed of. I can handle it. Besides, you left me with no other option. So, have you sorted everything out? I think we should phone Becky and talk things over again. After all, Will's staying in Emmerdale till after the summer term's finished. Maybe we should let Emma stay, too. Well, they'll never agree to it. Well, I think they might, when they consider the alternatives. I'm afraid Eric Pollard was right. Steve's company will be going bust. We can't have lost everything. 
The figures will be finalised in a few weeks. There'll be a small amount of money left over for creditors. Uh, a few pence in the pound, maybe. A few pence? I trusted you with my savings. You said I was going to be a rich man. We're no better off. Steve's lost all our money, too. I'm afraid I don't believe that. This is all part of some sort of fiddle, isn't it? All channeled through some offshore company. Do you really think I'd have waited around if I'd got millions salted away somewhere? How could you be so stupid? So reckless with other people's money? Nobody complained when things were going right. I've always taken risks. The difference is this time it didn't come off. We're really very sorry it had to happen to you, Alan. Sorry? You're sorry? I'm ruined, Kim. I don't want your sympathy. I want my money back. There's nothing I can do. But we'll see about that. You're not getting away with this. I'll sue you through every court in the land. Taking my advice, should have got your hands on his property. Only way to cover your losses, boy. All he owes you is a catering bill. I've lost my life savings. A few bits of furniture aren't going to make much difference. This is really terrible, Alan. If there's anything I can do to help. Well, perhaps you could get the truth out of him. But whether he really has gone broke or whether I'm just being conned. Kelly, you better get back to the surgery. Find out how many of my appointments Paddy can cover and cancel the rest. Look. I'm going to see if I can get to the bottom of all this. Hey, you have a lot of friends in the village, Al. They're not going to stand by and let this happen to you. You're leaving me? Only if you haven't got the guts to come with me. I've told you, we need to get out of here. It might be better if we wait till it's dark. We can go out the back way if you like. It's only putting off the inevitable. They'll all catch up with us in the end. Turner's full of hot ale. Soon realise there's no point in suing. Alan Turner's a decent man who's been ruined by your stupidity. It's Zoe, she doesn't look happy either. Right, that settles it. I'm going out the back. I'm not wasting any time listening to her sanctimonious lectures about ethics. Not until I've got some answers ready. to open the door for me. Sorry, Mark. Well, then. I've got a few papers to deal with and now I'll need you to take me out to home farm. Do I have to wear the uniform? Of course. It goes with the job. I don't mind normally, just not this afternoon, eh? What on earth is bothering you? I used to work up at home farm. I've still got mates who work there now. If they see me like this, they're just going to take the mickey out of me. I see. Well, then the choice is yours. Keep your pride and lose your job, or shut up and get on with it. Oh, I haven't done anything like this since I abandoned a grotty bedsit when I was a student. This is a bit more serious than owing a few weeks back rent. You know, I bought the place a couple of years later. Gave me great satisfaction to give the landlord his marching orders. Did you tell Frank why you did it? <laughs> of course not. I told him it was a good investment property. And it was. Ended up making a good profit on the deal. You know, people think I was just some secretary who got lucky. But I did just as much as Frank to build up Home Farm. And now I've put it all at risk. And I'm going to get it all back. Gonna get very far in that. I told you they were out to get us. Perhaps if we leave it there for a while, they'll do enough damage for us to claim an insurance write off. Here, take James. <sighs> I'll call a cab.
Lisa. I reckon we should have a little celebration. Cheers, love. I could do with one. <sighs> You've been painting? Aye. And I reckon it's a masterpiece. <laughs> Wanna see it? Ah. Aye. What do you reckon? Exactly, it's beautiful. You must have worked really hard. Yeah, well, nothing's too much trouble for you, love. I never wanted us rowing over at workspace. Neither did I. Well, I'm so glad everything's turned out well. <laughs> hey? I'll go and stick this up outside. Oh, I'd rather you didn't. I thought you said you liked it. Well, I love it, cos you made it for me. Well, that don't make sense. What's wrong with it? Well, I still feel like I'm an apprentice dingle, really, and I'm afraid that somebody might come in and tell me I've got no right to be here. I've told you no one wants the place. Maybe, but until I'm sure, I don't want to start advertising. You just have to be patient with me. OK. Whatever makes you happy, Long. I should never have listened to you. We should have warned people about Steve as soon as we found out. On the contrary, everything seems to be going our way. How can you be so callous? Alan Turner looks absolutely broken by all this. That's his problem. He should have known better than to trust someone like Steve. A lot of people made that mistake. <sighs> no one falls for a con man's lies unless they're greedy enough to want what he's offering. All we need to do is turn that to our advantage. Well, I am not comfortable with any of this. Nor am I. A lot of rumours flying around about Mr Marchant. If they prove to be true, it might affect the asking price. Looks like we can check that out for ourselves. Kim and I need to talk to you. Now. Would you mind paying the cabbie, Zoe? Seems to come out without any check. How very inconvenient. Come on. This is going to be interesting. Now oh, then, Will. We're both men of the world, eh? Let's let bygones be bygones. <laughs> What's this all about, Mr Pollard? All right. I need your help. I hear you're a bit of a whiz with computers. So? So I'd like you to help me with my new one. Make it worth your while. They're decourses, you know. They give you details in the shop where you bought it from. I, I well, I didn't actually buy it. I acquired it. Uh, but I'm particularly interested in information that may already be in there. Yeah, well, I, I could do. OK. Try and get it to ring tonight. Bye. Kids are playing football outside. They want you to join them. Uh, later, maybe. I've just, just been talking to Becky. And? Well, they've agreed that Emma can stay till after the summer term's finished. If... if it's all right with us. You realise what we'd be taking on? <laughs> well, I'm starting to. Teenage girls aren't easy at the best of times. And Emma's certainly quite a handful. Well, she has had an awful year. I don't think she meant it about running off to London. Yeah, maybe, but she used it to get her own way. She can't keep blackmailing us, Jack. She's got to learn to take no for an answer sometimes. Hi. I'm not interrupting, am I? I've just been talking to your mum. And uh, we've all agreed that you can stay till after the summer term. That's brilliant. But if you're going to be part of this family, we have to sort out a few ground rules. We have three other children to consider. Whatever you say, Sarah. I've got your present. I know I've been a bit of a pain recently, but that's just because I was worried. Now everything's settled, I really will turn over a new leaf. Well, I hope I haven't come at an awkward time. No. I just wanted to get Joseph to bed. Rachel, I, I believe you have some investments with Stephen Marchant. Yeah. Yeah, he's quite lucky, really. He doesn't normally bother with small-time investors, but he said he'd make an exception for me because I used to work for him. Well, so, so it's not a lot, then? Well, it might not be to the likes of Steve, but it is to me. I scraped together every penny I could find. He said it should grow into quite a tidy sum in a few years' time. Yes, I bet he did. Is something wrong? Yes. 
I've got some rather bad news for you. He's got to resign. I'm not sitting on the same board as him after what he's done. I imagine that's why they're calling an emergency board meeting. Well, exactly. And I hope I can rely on your financial support. Sorry to keep you waiting. I felt I ought to wear something more suitable for the occasion. Can we just get on with it? In a moment. Uh, Lady Tara, it's delightful to see you, but I'm afraid this meeting's for Home Farm board members. I shall have to ask you to leave. I didn't mean to intrude. Alan Turner says you've lost all my money. Well, there, there has been a shortfall on some investments, but I'm doing my best to address the situation. What's that supposed to mean? How much have I got left? Well, I'm hardly in a position to issue exact figures. Steve, this might be peanuts to you, but it's Joseph's future and mine. I realise this is painful for you, Rachel. And if Steve hasn't got the guts to spell it out, then I will. You'll be lucky to see any of your money back. Well, what's your problem? He's your husband. You've got plenty of money. Why don't you sort out his debts? No, I can't. And if you want this sorted out, then you'll let us get on with our meeting. <coughs> What's the problem? Couldn't get into it. <laughs> Piece of cake. It's all financial transactions, boring figures. I'll wipe them for you. Oh. No, uh, don't do that. Uh, I'd really quite like to see them. <laughs> oh. You mentioned making it worth more while. Yes, uh, shall we say, um, ten pounds, then? I think these are worth a bit more than that. I'll take this modem for starters. And, uh, what about my figures? They've just finished printing. They're for you. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. What's this supposed to mean? Let's have a look. Ah, nice one. Clever man, that Steve. He's put a bug in the programme. Wiped the lot. Cheers for that. Well, if we're all agreed on the minutes of the previous meeting... Can you just get on with it? Your father and I built this company, Chris. And whilst I'm still chairman, you can show me the proper respect. We realise this isn't easy for you, Kim. I don't think any of you realise how much Home Farm means to me. It's been my life. But... Circumstances would dictate that it would be no longer appropriate for my husband to remain a director. <laughs> Might be hard if they jail him. <laughs> Steve will be offering his shares for sale to this board under the usual arrangement. I want to make it clear that I will be standing by him in the difficult weeks ahead. And I wouldn't want any adverse publicity to affect the company. So I've decided it would be better if I resigned and sold my shares too. Obviously, there are financial implications with such a large number of shares becoming available. So I think Steve and I should withdraw while you consider the options. She's gone. <laughs> 